Okay, Jeremiah 29, I'll start at verse um, 6. It says, Take ye wives, I'm sorry, verse 5, matter of fact, build ye houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. See that? It said, Build ye houses and dwell in them, right? So you need to be oriented. And mind you, this is Jeremiah and his message to the Israelites who were exiled and captive in Babylon, right? So this is a prophet of God giving a message from God to God's people. While they were exiled, they weren't home, right? They were subjugated. They were oppressed. They were slaves. They were captive in Babylon, ancient Babylon, right? We're in a modern-day Babylon now. They were in ancient Babylon, right? So in understanding how the Bible works prophetically, you have to understand that Things are oftentimes prophetically referred to allegorically. Let's break the word allegorically down. The word allegorically, of course, the root is allegory. You break the root of allegory down, it's the word alias. So you're referring to something by an alias. So when you see scriptures refer to a place as Babylon, but it's happening later on down the line, then the prophets that are interacting with Babylon, of course, we know Babylon is not a factor in the earth right now. Uh, a place called Babel, Babylon, etc. That fell a long time ago um, by the hands of the Medio Persians. But it refers to a place that is applying the name Babylon to its calling the calling it by the alias of Babylon. It could, it would only do that because there are similarities between that place and ancient Babylon. It's the same place they also call Sodom. They also call it Egypt, amongst other things. So we can apply the things that are applicable to the kingdoms that it's likened to. That's why it's referred to it allegorically. Right? So we can now take this principle of these instructions that God has given Jeremiah to give the Israelites. We can apply that to us in this modern Babylon. Start from the top. Jeremiah 29 and 5. Build ye houses and dwell in them. So, go, so build houses. Right? This is all talking about being family oriented. Right? Have a place to live. Prioritize that. Prioritize shelter. Right? Read on. It says, and dwell in them. Live in that place. Have a place to live, a place to call home. Right? Read. Plant gardens. It, it say what? Plant gardens. Plant gardens. Right? This, this is referring to entrepreneurial endeavors, not just literally gardening. You have to understand, in the ancient times, a garden was an entrepreneurial endeavor. It was an enterprise. You would plant those things. Not only would it feed your family, you could then take the produce from your own garden and go sell it to other people. So the Bible is actually telling us not only to go buy us homes, buy ourselves homes, property. It's also telling us to open businesses, right? In Babylon. Go ahead. Yeah, I got a precept to after. So it says, uh, take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. Uh, it say what? Beget uh, sons and daughters. Have babies. Have babies. Prioritize these this family. Have a shelter for your babies. Have a business for your children. Right? That's what the word of God is telling us to do. Go ahead. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. Uh, to what? Do your own business. Do your own business. Go ahead. And to work with your own hands uh -huh. as we commanded you. See that? As we commanded you. Do your own business. Work with your own hands. So the scriptures are encouraging you being entrepreneurial. Right? Go ahead. That you may walk honestly toward them that are without. Uh, so you may walk honestly towards them. Meaning the people that don't believe what you believe. The people who are not in your lifestyle, you walk honestly towards because these people see you as a hardworking brother. Right? Right? A brother that's about self, that's about his people, that's about his community, that's enriching his community, doing for self, reaching back, grabbing people in the community, bringing them up. Right? Go ahead. And that you may have lack of nothing. Right? And you what? You may have lack of nothing. Because you have your own income. Right? That you're in control of. That you have lack of nothing. Right? Go ahead. Um, back to verse, or back to Jeremiah 26. Uh -huh. Take ye wives and beget 
uh, sons and daughters. It say what? It begin sons and daughters. Go ahead. And take wives for your sons. See that? And, and, and look, and get your kids married. That's what the Most High is telling us to do. So He didn't tell us to stop the family process just because we're in oppression. He didn't tell that to us in ancient Babylon. He told us through this oppression, make sure that you keep having kids and you keep opening businesses and you keep buying homes. And then your kids, when they come a time to marry, get them married. Read on. It says, uh, and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there. And look at, look at this. Look at this. Jeremy Thomas. Ha ha. Bible says, come out of her, my people. And this clown says, be an entrepreneur in Babylon. The Lord said, don't fall for the love of the Pharisees. So let's read the Bible again, please, yeah. from the top. I'm reading the Bible. I didn't say anything. I'm reading the Bible. Jeremy Thomas, you idiot. Come out of her, my people. We're going to break that scripture down here in a second because you're oblivious to what that means. Right? And we're going to demonstrate what that means in a minute. I'm going to just be real with you, Jeremy Thomas. You do not know the Bible. Right. You don't know it. That's why you just try to say the leaven of the Pharisees. You don't even know what that is. So you're going to get embarrassed in front of everybody tonight. Right? Go ahead. For uh, this idiot. Again, this is Jeremiah 29. Let's start with four. Thus uh -huh. said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. This, this does say if Yahweh, yeah. the God of Israel. What did he say? Unto all that are carried away captive. To all the slaves, the captives where? Whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Unto Babylon. He says, the Bible says, come out of her. This clown says, be an entrepreneur in Babylon. No, God said be an entrepreneur in Babylon. <laughs> Wait, bro, you're so cut. This nigga here? You bumites with your bumite doctrine that, want your pe that don't want your people to... Try to make a couple. And guess what? You can be entrepreneurial. It doesn't mean life's going to not have problems. You idiot. Paul, Yahweh was an entrepreneur. Paul was an entrepreneur. You come from entrepreneur. You don't come from bums. Right? That's not who we are. Idiot. Go ahead. Proverbs 22 and 29. Uh -huh. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? You say what? Seest thou a man diligent in his business? Diligent in his business. Go ahead. He shall stand before kings. See that? Go ahead. He shall not stand before mean men. See that? Meaning poor people. <laughs> Base people. Right? Go ahead. Yeah. And anyway, back to Jeremiah 29, uh, verse 5. Build ye houses and dwell in them. And say what? Build ye houses and dwell in Go them. and get you some property. Live in your house. Have a steady place of dwelling for yourself and your family. That's what God said. Right? Come out of her, my people. You shouldn't have a house. Shut your dumb ass up, man. I mean, y'all niggas is just stupid. You have to, but nobody, see, I would say they had no reason to, that, or they have no business teaching the Bible. Here's the problem. They don't, he doesn't teach it. No one listens to this nigga. Anywhere. Right? Like, third, what is third rock tribe? Don't be a vagabond. Right? That's what the tribe of Levi we call it. Don't be a vagabond. Go ahead. Yeah, and again, that's not to say, like, you know, you might have a time where, like Alizar said, just because you uh, you have your own business or you're an entrepreneur doesn't mean you're not going to have times where you struggle, but you're not just sitting there on your ass being a bummer and making it, you're trying to twist the Bible to justify just, just, you being just, a bummer. We in captivity is your excuse for why you can't move and shape. Feel what I'm saying? You got to think about diversifying. You're a whole Israelite. You're a whole chosen person of God. God has given us these magnificent minds. We think of and we create all kinds of, we have all kinds of ideas. All these major great inventions that exist in this world. We've contributed. Right? We've contributed this to the world. Right? Do you know that the Native American, the tribe of Gad, invented a syringe? Just think about that. Invented a syringe, gave a syringe to the world, right? The stoplight was given to the world by us. Mm -hmm. The windshield wipe was given to the world. Mm -hmm. The color TV was given to the world by us. The algorithm in which was necessary for the internet to exist was given to the world by our people. This is a mind that God has given us. 
Why would we let that thing go to waste? Why would we hide our talents, right? Real truth is censored. That's why his trash is flowing on YouTube. So that so why are you able to talk then, dumbass? Like hey, you good. Jeremy Thomas, you're a joke. You have no real truth. If you think come out of her, my people, is in reference to you justifying you being a bum-ass nigga, right? You are oblivious to what the Bible. Don't worry, we're going to get to that in a second. You're oblivious to the Bible, bro. Right. The reason why this is flowing on YouTube is because it is ordained by Yahweh. I want you to understand that. If this ministry were of men, it would have failed a long time ago. Right. You are somebody who nobody knows or gives a damn about or follows. Just a whole ass nigga, bro. That's why this series is so important. The side man to fuck up Monday. These niggas is hoes. These niggas need to be told what they need to do because they don't know. They're not men of God. They're not men by any standard of the imagination other simply than biologically men. And that's up for debate. Let's keep reading. Back to Jeremiah 29. <laughs> this, D, uh, D. Rich is the greatest. Very, He just put it so simply. You're a loser, Jeremy. And that's it, right? So let's keep reading. It says, uh, build ye houses and dwell in them. Build a house. Go ahead. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Right. Be entrepreneurial. Eat the fruit of that. Right. Go put some work in. Go start your business. And then when that business makes money, eat the fruit of that business. Right. Eat the fruit of that business. That's what God said. Go ahead. Uh, it says, take ye wives and get sons and daughters. Right. Have babies, man. Right. Go ahead. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. Read on. That they may bear sons and daughters. Have more kids. Have your kids have kids. Right? Here's the point. Go ahead. That you may be increased there. You need. We need to focus on increasing ourselves here. Because this place has focused on decreasing us. This place has focused on murdering us. This place has focused on destroying our reproductive systems. Rendering us infertile. Right? That's what this place has tried to do. This place pumps birth control into our women, right? This place pumps unhealthy, unimaginable, abominable foods that deal with our fertility. This place tries to sterilize us, right? Don't let this place do that. Have kids. In order to have them kids, you're going to need some money. You're going to need a place for them to stay. This is what God is telling us while this idiot has a problem with men having chi men having children and businesses and a place to live while they wait for salvation while they build this nation. You have you don't have what it takes to build this nation. Just a weak ass bum ass whole ass nigga, man. But it's okay, Jeremy, because you represent so many other whole ass niggas like you. But the beauty of it is. One day, you can stop being a bitch-ass nigga one day, man. <laughs> Just maybe stop being a hoe-ass nigga one day and go out there and be somebody and build refrigerators and such. Let's keep reading. Proverbs 13 and 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children. A good man. The Bible says a good man got something for his grandkids. A good man. We know Jeremy is a mean, he's a mean man, right? And me, I'm from no mean city. <laughs> it says, um, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Uh-huh. See that? Right? Go back, go back to Jeremiah. You finish Jeremiah? Yeah, that's pretty much Um, let's get come out of her, my people, for this idiot who doesn't know what come out of her, my people means. Ah man, y'all niggas is slow. Revelation chapter 18, verse uh, 2. I'm going to start at verse uh, start at one. 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, uh -huh. having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Uh -huh. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Is Bab fallen. Babylon the great is fallen. Is Babylon the great fallen right now? I'm sitting in Babylon the great. I'm sitting in one of the, the most emerging cities in Babylon the Great right now. 
Atlanta, Georgia. How is it falling? It hasn't fallen. So like it not falling, it says Babylon has fallen, past tense. Babylon is fell at this point. King Judah, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahshua, break down off the water. So this isn't talking about now. Some of when it's actually fell. Read. And it's become the habitation of devils. And what? The habitation of devils. When is that? When it's wasted. Thermonuclear fire. That's when it's talking about. Not before thermonuclear fire. When the missiles is coming. It's contextually what come out of her my people is talking about. For this idiot that doesn't know how to use the, but that doesn't understand the Bible, but want to come talk to you, come into my live stream to watch me talk about the Bible. Nigga, who come to watch you? Nobody. And there's a reason for that, right? Because you don't know it, because the Most High has not dealt with you to know it. That's why you said the dumbass comment that's got you pinned. King Judy, y'all about your mouth, start walk, walk. Not like we're the only people who know the Bible. Not saying that whatsoever. But it's it's always it's always funny to me, right? It's always funny to me, right? Look look at this, right? We can deal with him in a second because he don't know how to deal with the Bible. Don't worry, Jeremy. Everything that you're talking about, I can address. Start addressing what I'm talking about, right? Not deviating. Deal with head on the scriptures I'm going to because everything you say we're gonna deal with, right? Matthew 24. We'll we'll get with that in a second. We're gonna deal with those head on. Something you can't do. You're going to run. You can't deal with Jeremiah's scripture we just read, right? Now I'm going to show you that you don't. You are oblivious to what this is talking about. We're already showing it in Revelation 18. Then we're going to go here, right? Keep reading. It says, in the hold of every foul spirit and in case of every unclean and hateful bird. So when Babylon is wasted is the timeline context for when this prophecy is going to take place. It's not now. Come out of her, my people. It's not now. It's not figurative. It's not ideological. It's not philosophical. It's not spiritual. It is very literal. And if you keep reading, if you didn't just stop or read half a verse, you would know that. Let's keep going. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Mm -hmm. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Oh, uh, Jorge, y'all by Shabbat Go ahead. That you, so, uh -huh. that you be not partakers of her sins. Uh-huh. And that you receive not of her plagues. Right. So this is when the plagues are coming of the missiles and people are being delivered from them. Come out of her, my people, is literally in reference to being delivered out of this place. Not changing your brain, idiot. Let's keep reading. No, just, just keep reading the 18, then we'll Verse go. Five. Uh -huh. For her sins have reached unto heaven, uh -huh. and God has remembered her iniquities. Keep going. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Uh huh. And double unto her, double according to her works. Uh huh. And the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. Right. This is talking about the judgment, the thermonuclear fire coming to this country. Go ahead. It says, uh, How much she hath glorified herself and lived de uh, deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. Uh huh. For she saith in her heart, I said a queen and a no widow, uh -huh. and, she, and shall see no sorrow. Read on. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. This is in that one day. That's not before that one day yeah. in that one day that's when that happens not before then so you don't you you misinterpret it and you totally rip that scripture out of context in order to try to justify your bum ass mentality and that's a cancer right in our communities right finish that eight yeah it says uh therefore shall her plagues come in one day that's why I said in verse uh, five, come out of her that you don't receive of the plagues. What are the plagues? Death, mourning, famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. Uh huh. I got a precept. What you got? Revelation chapter 11, yeah. verse 12. Uh huh. Get that, says, and then we go get Zechariah. Go ahead. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. Or uh -huh. Get out. Come, up, uh, come out of her, my people. Same thing. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. Right. And the same hour was their great earthquake. In the, the in the same hour. Yeah. So there's going to be a miraculous deliverance. Chariots are going to deliver. That's what the come out of my people. It's telling you about when the chariots are literally going to deliver people from Babylon, from the whore. That's what that's talking about. Right. Zechariah. 
This is Zechariah chapter 2, verse 6. It says, um, verse, yeah, I'll give you verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, uh -huh. saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Uh -huh. Where you at? That's what you're looking for? Exactly. No, Zechariah 13, bro. You talking about? Uh -huh. Yeah. Zechariah 13 and um, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, uh -huh. two parts shall be cut off and die. Read on. But the third part shall be left therein. Right. Go ahead. And I will bring the third part through the fire. Through the fire. You see that? That's when we're going to come out of her, my people. That third part is going to be brought through the fire. That's the come out of her, my people. Not ideologically. Right. So now I'm going to help your dumb ass out. Right. Go ahead. Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Uh -huh. And they shall gather together his elect uh -huh. from the four winds and from the one end of heaven to the other. Come out of her, my people. That's it. Yeah. Not ideologically, not philosophically. Yeah. Go ahead. And that's why Revelation 7, remember, one of the angels has to run into the room and say, don't hurt the, the, uh, the trees or the grass till we have sealed the, um, the elect. The, sealed the elect. And so, then they get delivered. So give me... Um, Give me Micah 2 and 10. So here, so here, I'm going to help you out, Jeremy. The verse that actually says what you're trying to make come out of her, my people say, I'm going to, I'm going to show it to you. Micah 2 and 10. Micah 2 and 10. Uh -huh. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. This is what? Not your rest. This is not our rest. Right? Go ahead. Because it is polluted. Guess what? Is it your, if you have to work hard being an entrepreneur, is that rest? No. So that doesn't contradict the scripture at all that you're an entrepreneur right go ahead because it is polluted it shall destroy you it shall what it shall destroy if you. your mind is in this place and set after these ways it shall destroy you and let me explain something to you the arab man that has a goddamn bodega on your block his mind is not in america does he still earn money to feed and provide for his family in america yes but his mind is not in america Right, the ham might to come over here and do a business. His mind not in America. The Moabite to come over. His mind is not in America. They're still entrepreneurs, though, right? Yes, they are. You're an idiot. Finish that. It says it shall destroy you, even with a sword destruction. Uh, even with what? A sword destruction. Even with a sword destruction, if your mentality, if your philosophy is in al al alignment with this place, you being an entrepreneur has absolutely nothing to do with your mentality. Right? Go ahead. Proverbs 13 and 4. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. Exactly. You see that? Desireth and have nothing. Read on. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. See that shall be made what? Fat. Meaning the Lord is going to bless. The Lord is going to increase. Right? Nobody's trying to uh, become a multi-billionaire here. Yeah. Right? But there's absolutely nothing wrong with pursuing entrepreneurial pursuits. Not putting them above the most high. Right? See, here's the problem. We're shining examples. Brothers have entrepreneurial pursuits. Still put this work first. This bitch asked me to go say something about me yawning. Maybe because I had to get up early. Maybe because I had to do things. Maybe because I'm planning a Passover. Right? You know anything about that? All right. Are hundreds of people dependent upon you to coordinate an event for them to come to, for them to, to eat the Lord's Passover? No. Right? You can't even get the bitch you lay with to respect you. Let's just be serious. But a nigga is on our comment board talking loud. But that bitch does not respect him. Right? Nigga's a hoe. So I'm going to just keep going. See, it's late. It's Monday. It's just Monday. Man, the fuck up Monday. We curse on the late Monday show. Right? It's late night show. Put the kids to bed. Right? So let's get Matthew 24, 19. Let's deal with this. This idiot doesn't, he doesn't know the Bible. Right? You said what? Go ahead. Proverbs 6 and 6. Uh-huh. Um, See, and, and, and it's like it. And, 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 and the topic of tonight is how to build strong communities and nations, yeah. right? And part of it is chastising, rebuking, and breaking the bitch assness off a nigga like him. That's part of building a strong community. A whole ass nigga like this dude, he need to get that broken off him. He needs to be ridiculed. He needs to be chastised. He needs to be mocked before the world for this. Wow. He needs to understand that his whole ass behavior and the way that he thinks is a cancer and it's unacceptable and he should be embarrassed and ashamed that he thinks like this. That's a part of building a strong community and nation. Shaming. Whole ass behavior. Right? Shaming. 
the niggas around you that don't want to step up and be fathers. Shaming the niggas that's around you that don't want to be responsible romantic partners, right? They're just going around having all kind of just wild, doing all kind of wild stuff, right? In the bedroom with different women and not actually stepping up, being responsible, being a leader, being a husband, etc. Right? We got to shame that. We got to shame deadbeat fathers. We have to make it uncomfortable for them to exist in our communities. Therefore, they'll stop existing in our community. Right? And ho ass niggas like Jeremy Thomas. Right? Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 6, I'll start verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Uh -huh. Which, having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer. And gathereth, gathereth her food in the harvest. Nobody has to tell an ant what to do. But the ants are well ordered. And the ants take care of each other in their colony. And nobody tells ants what to do. Ants don't take orders. They just get shit done. Right? Be like an ant. So let's deal with uh, Matthew 24, 19. Then we off this hole. Matthew chapter 24, verse 19. It says, and warn to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Mm -hmm. Oh, see that? You're telling people to have kids. It says, woe to them that are pregnant or have small children in those days, right? Keep going. It says, but pray that your flight be not in the winter, uh -huh. uh, neither on the Sabbath day. So like you're 24. Let me show you something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I watch this. Read verse 15. Verse 15. And when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Stop it there. Context. The abomination of desolation. What is that referring to, Assad? 70 AD. 70 AD. Yeah. This prophecy was for 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, right? Let's keep going. Then let them which are be in Judea flee into the mountains. Are you in Judea, nigga? I thought you were in Babylon. Didn't he say he was in Babylon earlier? What application does this and what relevance does this have to today? I'll tell you, none. Give me Isaiah 65 and 13, right? Let's say you are with child and all hell breaks loose here in America. What did the Most High say? I'll tell you what he said. Read that. Isaiah 65 and 13. Uh -huh. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, behold. This, word, this is Yahweh speaking, right? Okay, go ahead. My servant shall eat. It say what? My servant shall eat. Guess what? My servant shall eat. Read on. Not my servant shall eat, but you shall be hungry. You're going to be hungry. The ones that have not served Yahweh, the ones that did not keep these laws, the ones that did not bow their knee to Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, they'll starve and you'll eat, right? Even if you're with child, right? Go ahead. Even if you're giving suck in those days, even if your flight is on the Sabbath, right? You will eat. They will starve. Read. You shall be hungry. Uh -huh. uh, behold, my servant shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. They're going to be thirsty. The servants of Yahweh will not be thirsty. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Listen on that. Yeah, you, you, you're cut, man. All right. See that? And this is why y'all should just shut up in the damn comment board sometimes. Because when I feel like it, in the spirit, the spirit get on me. I'm embarrassed, you niggas. Uh, Most high, I'll make an example out of some of you idiots out here. Yeah. Right? You don't know the Bible. He done went and out of context quoted, come out of her, my people, and Matthew 24 and 19.